Well, science can mean uh, testing hypotheses by comparing them with evidence. It's a, it's a search for the truth. That's the science I love. But there's another kind of science that has become popular nowadays, and that's finding materialistic explanations for everything. That's materialistic science, not empirical science. For empirical science, the evidence matters the most. For materialistic science, the story matters the most. Materialism is the idea that the only thing real is material particles and the forces among them. Things like God, spirit, mind, soul, free will, they're all imaginary. In a materialistic worldview, you have to explain everything in terms of materialistic philosophy. But if you get rid of that philosophy, if you can free yourself from that bias, then you can follow the evidence wherever it leads, and often it does not lead to materialism. When Darwin wrote his Origin of Species in 1859, he called it one long argument. And it was basically an argument against creation by design and in favor of a materialistic picture of evolution. Unguided natural processes explain everything. So that's the story. Darwin didn't have the evidence for that. He basically just had the argument. And ever since then, the evidence has been plugged into that story to serve as illustrations, when in fact the story comes first. According to Darwin's theory, uh, a, a living thing is born from its parents, resembling the parents pretty much as human children resemble their parents. So if in fact the story of evolution is true, we would expect to see an innumerable number of transitional fossils uh, linking the old forms with the new. And we don't see that. We don't see that anywhere in the fossil record. When I look at an artistic depiction of Neanderthal, uh, I give it about as much uh, credit as I would something in the National Enquirer, uh, you know, a tabloid at the news, uh, newsstand. Uh, <clears throat> Some people, experts, think that if I were to see a Neanderthal on a bus, I wouldn't be able to tell it from a modern human being. Others think it was more like the cavemen in the drawings that we see in National Geographic. The truth is, we don't know. Uh, it's all uh, very imaginative. Probably the most famous uh, ape to human fossil uh, has been nicknamed Lucy. Uh, stood, I don't know, maybe three or four feet tall. Uh, the, as I understand it, the entire skeleton was not found. It's not, there's still some controversy over whether Lucy uh, walked on her feet or was knuckle dragging. Uh, but the main point for me as a biologist is I have seen no evidence whatsoever how a creature like that could transform into a human being. Chimps are chimps, gorillas are gorillas. There's no evidence for their transformation into anything like us. Every uh, year or two, uh, we see some headline about the latest fossil find of the missing link between apes and humans. And uh, the track record is not good for these things. They, they sort of fall by the wayside soon after the the hype is over. Uh, most recently, a bunch of bones were found in a cave in South Africa and hyped as our ancestors. Uh, most experts now don't believe that, but the hype was there. And uh, we'll get a hype again next year for some other fossil find. And it's all just uh, a story in need of evidence. Not too long ago, a fossil was found that uh, was thought to uh, predate, uh, I think, Lucy. Uh, and the expectation was that it would look sort of chimpanzee-like. Well, it turned out not to look chimpanzee-like at all. And so uh, the initial hype uh, put it out there as, you know, the ancestor of us all. 
But when the actual evidence came in and was analyzed carefully, it turned out not to be true. So there's a strong bias here to put the fossils in pre-existing slots in the story as though they looked like they belong there, when in fact it often turns out that they don't. Imagine if you were to find two human skeletons in a field. Could you establish whether one was the ancestor of the other? The answer is no, unless you had written records or maybe some DNA. When you're looking at fossils, fragmentary fossils, from millions of years apart, often on different continents, there's absolutely no way you can line them up in ancestor-descendant relationships. And biologists themselves have pointed this out. So again, the story has to be there to begin with, and then the fossils are plugged into it as needed.